Hi, I'm Angelo Gavrilatis, the Federal President of the Australian Education Union. Here we are at the beginning of week two of our re-energised campaign to achieve funding reform in the interests of our students and the nation as a whole. We're going to urge Peter Garrett, the Federal Minister for Education today, to forge ahead with the funding reform that the Labor government has committed itself to. But more importantly, we're going to call on Premier Barry O'Farrell to commit to funding reform. During the course of the Gonski Review, the New South Wales government argued that the current levels of funding are seeing too many kids fall through the cracks. In fact, they had identified a $10 billion shortage in, in funding with respect to school education. Fast forward 12 or so months and this government has cut funding to schools. Today we're saying to Barry O'Farrell, reverse the cuts and invest in schools. Reverse the cuts and embrace Gonski style reforms. Reverse the cuts and put politics aside and negotiate a new funding agreement with the Commonwealth Government that will put our students front and centre. Because if we are not able to make sure that every single student in every school irrespective of where they're living, irrespective of the means of their parents, isn't able to reach their full potential, then we are denying our nation the opportunity to build a strong and a smart and a fair future for itself. This is our opportunity to deliver a fair education funding system that meets the needs of all students in all schools. In order to do that, we need the states to come with us on that reform journey. It's the most important in our nation's history and it needs to happen now. We're calling on the state government, Premier Barry O'Farrell, to put politics aside and start negotiating with the Commonwealth for funding reform. This is a once in a generation opportunity to reform the way our schools are funded and to better targeted funding to, in order to ensure that every child can reach his or her full potential. Last April, Barry O'Farrell said that we ignore Gonski at our, at our peril. Therefore, Mr O'Farrell, it's quite simple. Get on with funding reform. Give a clear commitment, a clear commitment that you're prepared to invest in schools to give every child a better opportunity to succeed. We need the, uh, the O'Farrell government to similarly reverse the cuts and announce an investment. Last year, the O'Farrell government announced a $1.7 billion cut to education. That's unacceptable and quite frankly hypocritical considering the New South Wales government's submission to the Gonski Review which argued quite strongly that there is a $10 billion shortfall in funding and too many children are falling through the cracks because of underfunding in our schools. The situation with, uh, with states and territories and the federal government, we're calling on them to negotiate, we're calling on them not to implement further cuts. It's critical, we know the research is there, that the, the assets and the, uh, the resources need to be made available to provide that quality education. Providing cuts will not move Australia forward and give us the outcomes for our children. The young people in our schools must not and should not have to wait for the recommendations of the Gonski Review to be implemented. They should not have to wait for politicking at the tables at the state level. Clearly it has been recognised that education across all jurisdictions in Australia is lacking in quality funding. Yet the O'Farrell government seeks to now savage the state level education funding on top of that. Young people in New South Wales schools must have and deserve to have immediately quality education. From a primary principles perspective, the young people today, the investment for the future, all of those things that are truisms are affected by the proposed cuts by the O'Farrell government, but they've also got the candle at the end there of the Gonski Review. And we're hoping sincerely that Peter Garrett, who spoke to us this morning, is able to en enact that, and we are putting some pressure on state government here in New South Wales to reverse that $1.7 billion decision. That's the amount of money extra that needs to go in, not the amount of money that needs to be cut. The Teach Federation on behalf of public education workers in this state are calling on the O'Farrell government to reverse the $1.7 billion cuts, stop playing politics with federal funding and get behind the Gonski reforms. The Gonski reforms that are being promoted by the federal government are this, this generation's opportunity to reverse decades of neglect in education. And O'Farrell, instead of playing politics and pulling money out of education, ought to be getting behind the Gonski um, funding model and not putting it at risk. 
Now, up to this point in time, we have had slow negotiations with the states around identifying those details of a national plan for school improvement, which we think can make a difference and need to be embedded in any agreed reform. I was pleased that when I met with education ministers on Friday, they agreed that we should have appropriate transparency and accountability measures in place for a national plan for school improvement. Additionally, under the broken funding model we now have, if state governments lessen their investment in education, that flows through the existing federal funding model and results in less federal funding for education in the future. We're willing to make sure that no school will lose a single dollar per student as a consequence of these reforms. We're willing and ready to start getting a national plan for school improvement that would mean that every student in every school, regardless of where they're living, regardless of how much money mum and dad earn, gets the best possible education. And now is time for us to continue on that journey. So I welcome uh, those from this community that have come here today in Sydney. I look forward to speaking uh, with uh, representatives across the school sector, government and non-government in the future. And I look forward to sitting down with my state colleagues soon and continuing to work towards delivering this crucial reform. I give a